Hi, my name is Dan Hawes, and I'm here to present VR-based context priming to increase student engagement and academic performance. From Carleton University in Ottawa, Canada, Faculty of Engineering and Design, School of Information Technology. Let's get started. So we were concerned about student anxiety and counterproductive mindsets and how that would affect the student experience, the academic performance and their overall mental health. Uh, and we also felt that there was lots of emerging technology that could potentially be of use in helping address some of these concerns. So the problem we saw was the negative effect, obviously, of the counterproductive mindsets on the educational activities of students and the limited use of the technology, uh, such as VR, to address this. So this was our challenge. Uh, our literature review explored four key areas counterproductive mindsets, things like anxiety, uh, cognitive biases, and scarcity mindset itself, uh, cognitive and effective priming from the domain of psychology, learning theories and mindsets from the educational domain, and technology solutions that might be considered to address this problem. Some of the key insights that we derived as a result of our literature review uh, we learned that virtual reality can be a very powerful substrate to optimize superliminal priming effects. So superliminal, things that are obvious, but, uh, sorry, things that are not obvious, but are present. So it's something that is visible, but you may not take notice of. Um, and priming effects, we'll talk about priming in a second. But the thing about VR was that it offered scenarios that are otherwise just not possible. Custom classrooms, nature simulations, new worlds, historical, futuristic, all become possible. Designers can customize and personalize in real time with environments, avatars, artifacts. Uh, it's also a procedural computational platform that allows us to stimulate and capture data in real time. And the very concept of virtual reality gives us increased feelings of presence that can suspend disbelief and optimize positive psychological effects and learning effects. We also learned that priming interventions can be very powerful tools to induce positive psychological learning effects in real time. So I should just chat about what is priming. Uh, priming in our context is any intentional action or stimulus, either cognitive, relating to cognition obviously, or affective, relating to emotion, that strives to improve the student learning mindset. So there are many ways of improving cognition, increasing positive affect, inducing calm, controlling attention, repeating exposures, increasing motivation, or improving situational context, which is gonna be the focus of our study. So when we put this all together, we have these three elements. We've got disruptive technology, we have these powerful technological insights, and we have the learning experience. So in doing so, we created four different priming methods. The PEP or preparatory experience priming, uh, those priming methods focus on things that we would do before the learning experience. The context-oriented priming, things that are antecedent or are part of the actual learning environment. Uh, Motivational-oriented priming, these are motivational messages or images that are within the context of the learning environment. And the reflective oriented priming, these are priming methods that happen after the actual learning experience, things to consider, reflective questions, data visualization, and all of these contribute to improving the learning experience and the student engagement. So we created something called virtual reality experience priming, where we can see the context of these four different priming methods. We have the, the preparatory prime, which precedes the training experience. We have the reflective prime, which is following the experience and the motivational and context-oriented prime happen within the context of the experience itself. There were four studies done uh, with 141 participants. Uh, we're not gonna discuss the first two. Uh, we'll give you the results, but uh, our focus today will be the learning effects of custom design situated learning environments. So we're gonna focus on the third one. But first, what did we learn in the previous studies? Well, we learned that VR gaming and VR meditation uh, reduced anxiety. We, redu we also learned that the VR video game Beat Saber improved cognitive performance on the UC MRT test, which is the University of California matrix reasoning test. 
And on that same test, VR meditation did not improve cognitive performance. So that was done in 2021 uh, with the publication listed below. So this study will focus on situated learning scenarios. We have three test conditions, one no prime and two prime conditions. So the no prime was the VR classroom. The prime condition was the, the first prime condition was the VR classroom with animation artifacts, subject matter uh, of animation and animation icons. Uh, and there was a VR animation studio. So the two primes were related to animation content. So our hypothesis, we surmised that prime conditions uh, will improve academic performance over the no prime conditions and the prime conditions themselves uh, would not experience uh, a difference. Uh, we hypothesized that prime conditions will improve subjective assessment of UX compared to the no prime scenarios. Uh, yet they'll be the same. There, there'll be no difference between the two priming conditions. And thirdly, all conditions will improve effective state. So that was our third hypothesis. So let's see what happened. So first of all, this was an image of the non-prime scenario. It's a standard screen with the teacher presenting to students. This is the first prime condition. You'll notice the screen is augmented with three images above and posters on the side and around the room. So those images above the screen iterate every 60 to 90 seconds and that causes a priming effect. And this is the animation studio. This is one view and this is the view from the front and the students are sitting there watching the screen. So here's what happens. So the context priming study, we can see that the VR classroom theater, the no prime condition, uh, did not do as well as the two priming conditions. In fact, the VR classroom theater with artifacts, prime one, and the VR animation studio, prime two, uh, both observed significant improvement in academic performance. Uh, and we see our P level of 0 0.0024 and uh, 0 0.014. So we know those are um, significant uh, indications. Uh, what was surprising and different from what we had hypothesized was the context priming uh, of anxiety and affect. So we noticed that the STI or the state trade anxiety inventory really had very little difference. It was fairly flat between both prime conditions and the no prime condition. Uh, and similarly, the PANIS or the positive affect negative affect schedule was similarly flat. So there was no real change in effective results between prime and no prime conditions. So what we learned, uh, both prime conditions, the classroom theater and animation artifacts uh, and the animation studio itself observed higher test scores than the no prime condition. And the, secondly, we learned that there was no improvement in affect or subjective UX when we compared prime conditions to no prime conditions, which lends credence to the effectiveness of superliminal priming, where users would be affected but not aware. Thank you very much.